Too dark there. There isn't an open area. No. Nice creek there. Yeah. It is. It's so nice there. You gotta get some wood in for the fire. Yeah, but um, I just gotta build a trail to get the wood that has been cut up around the wheelbarrow trail. I love it. Some of this is all wood though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But there's lots of good wood in there. Dan's dead standing firs. Yeah, I gotta change some of stuff. Can you buy it? Buy one? Uh, no. It's 575 um, and our max is 350. I think that's what she was asking. Probably what the right should be said. We're going to get all the children. kind of doesn't want to be there either because there's not enough light in the garden. But there might be other options. Like, that place could still be a retreat. And Shannon and Michael, Michael was open to the idea of keeping it a money making business sometimes. And maybe it could be a manager for events. Or, or, there's a lot of options like that that are pretty exciting. So it's good to know that they're quite open to it. to our Nelson Unitarian Spiritual Center service. And I'm going to start with these words of welcome from Reverend David Usher, who is a UU minister on the East Coast. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. We come together this morning seeking a reality beyond our narrow selves. A reality that binds us in compassion, love, and understanding to other human beings, and to the interdependent web of all living things. May our hearts and minds be opened this hour to the power and the insight that weaves together the scattered threads of our experience and help us remember the wholeness of which we are part. We come together to renew our faith in the holiness, the goodness, the beauty of life. To reaffirm the way of the open mind and the full heart. To rekindle the flame of memory and hope and to reclaim the vision of an earth more fair with all her people one. And I'm Julie Glenn and I'll be your service leader this morning. And Marsha, would you please light the chalice, which is the symbol of our Unitarian faith. I, uh, I like this candle. I like this candle um, in honor of the sun, and I find it quite fascinating, having just been asked to do this, that my desire, I like this candle for the notion of Ubuntu, 
which is an African notion of perhaps paying it forward, of the kindness with which we must treat all people and the environment and the earth. And it sort of suits what you were suggesting. So I like this candle for Ubuntu. Could you spell sun? And the next portion of our service is what we call joys and concerns. And this is where you can come up and share with us what's going on in your life, whether it's a joy or a concern, and, um, and anything else you'd like to share. And I'm going to light the first candle in gratitude for our speaker today. Maria. Thank you so much, Maria, for coming. I'd like to light a candle of <coughs> joy because we have our treasure and Dale back with us again after being in, in the hospital and going through a procedure and now he's looking well and healthy and with us again. I'm Dale. I'd like to express a, no, a photo of confidence in the healthcare system. The Kelowna Hospital is a fabulous facility. I've worked engineering-wise on Vancouver Hospital stuff, UBC Hospital stuff, and it is a first-rate facility. Don't hesitate to make use of it. Hopefully we never will. <laughs> Light a candle, Dale. <laughs> I'm lighting a candle in memory of a young man, 28 years old, Jonathan Cole Riley, who passed last week. Um, too young. Um, a uh, casualty of uh, drug addiction. I am lighting this candle in honor of my darling Dale, who I am thrilled to have come through the past two months with and successfully. But more than that, I have watched, if we're talking about Ubuntu, I have watched Dale spend a great deal of those two months working on the charitable tax filing for this church. Days and days and days trying to pull together masses of challenging, not quite all clear paperwork <coughs> and honoring the fact that he was able to complete that day before yesterday. And uh, I thank him for that work, and I'm really glad that it's done. <laughs> I see someone else getting up over in this corner. I have something to be grateful for. Sixty years ago today, hold it up to your mouth. Sixty years ago today, I became a mother. Mm. It was the career, it was the joy, it was everything that has meant everything to me. Not everything, but it directed my life. There's not a day goes by that I'm not grateful for that chance. <laughs> Motherhood was very fulfilling. Here, 
Um, I would like to light a candle for my partner who teaches me every day something that I don't know about. <coughs> I'll light this candle for all of the unexpressed joys and concerns that line our hearts. And before Freya's talk, um, I have this poem that I would like to read, which will kind of introduce what Freya's going to be talking about today. And it's a poem by Ella Wheeler Wilcox, and it's called, You Never Can Tell. You never can tell when you send a word like an arrow shot from a bow <coughs> by an archer blind, be it cruel or kind, just where it may chance to go. It may pierce the breast of your dearest friend, tipped with its poison or balm, to a stranger's heart in life's great mart, it may carry its pain or its calm. You can never tell when you do an act just what the result will be. But with every deed, you are sowing a seed, though the harvest you may not see. Every kindly act is an acorn dropped in God's productive soil. You may not know, but the tree shall grow with shelter for those who toil. You never can tell what your thoughts will do in bringing you hate or love. For thoughts are things, and their airy wings are swifter than carrier doves. They follow the law of the universe. Each thing must create its kind. And they speed o'er the track to bring you back whatever went out from your mind. And with that, I'd like to introduce Freya Shaw, my dear friend. And uh, Freya is going to talk to us today about the power of prayer. Prayer is a spiritual practice and the, where science and spirituality meet. And uh, the talk will be about 15 minutes, and then there's going to be, Freya's going to be leading us into a meditative prayer. And we're going to have a chance for discussion to ask Freya anything you would like about prayer. Afterwards. Afterwards. <laughs> Afterwards. <laughs> am I wired for sound? I think I am. Thank you so much, Julie. I'm really grateful that you asked me to speak. Julie and I have been meeting in a prayer practice and a healing way for a number of years now. And so I feel really honored that Julie has asked me to speak here at the center today. And I love that poem by Ella Wheeler Wilcox because it reminds us really clearly that we're praying all day. With every thought, with everything we think and everything we speak, it is actually having an effect on others, on ourselves, and on our lives, and on our world. And for me, that's fundamentally how we change what we don't like. We have the power within. And so this talk about prayer is really about that. And it's about how we can use prayer in our daily lives, how I use prayer in my daily life, and how it's becoming second nature for me. So I'm going to just start today with a prayer. Let's start with a simple prayer. It's about um, our own health. It's something that we all are concerned about. We all could use more good health. And it's easy to say a prayer for our health, as it's easy to say a prayer for anyone else's health. Prayer is easy and comfortable. So I'm going to start by saying a very short prayer for our own health, so you can follow along in your own mind and heart and with the words. I'm going to repeat the prayer three times, 
And then I'm going to give you some information. I'm going to learn a new formula about how I have learned to pray. To pray. And then we're going to go into a meditation to kind of set that formula up after I've given you the information. And then we're going to repeat this prayer towards the end of the talk and see if for you there's a difference between the prayer as we start and the prayer as we finish. And the whole thing will take about 30 minutes. And in the middle, there's some scientific information I want to share with you, which I think is important. Bear with me if it's too much information. I'll try and keep it concise. But if I don't give that information, I'm not really going to get my message across. So hopefully that will be just right for you. So we're going to start with a prayer. So get comfortable. Close your eyes. Join in as you feel fit, as you see fit, as you feel comfortable to this. And I will just guide this prayer for you. I am in perfect health and every cell in my body is filled with light. I am balanced, healthy, and whole. I am in perfect health, and every cell in my body is filled with light. I am balanced, healthy, and whole. I am in perfect health, and every cell in my body is filled with light. I am balanced, healthy, and whole. Thank you. Thank you for this prayer. So I'm going to go into the talk and we'll repeat this prayer towards the end of the talk. And bear in mind that the prayer is spoken in the present tense, which is an important key. So I'm just going to start with taking a look at the definition of prayer in the dictionary. So there are two simple definitions of prayer a personal communication or a petition addressed to a deity in the form of petitioning, adoration, praise, or thanksgiving. And the second definition of prayer is the practice of praying as a solution to human problems. And that's really what we're going to talk about, or what I'm going to talk about today, how to use prayer as a solution to human problems. But to go back to the first definition, which is referring to prayers of gratitude. Really feeling grateful can heal us and heal our world and bring us many blessings. And some indigenous elders use the thank you prayer as a way of life, as a way of going through the day, stopping, giving thanks, living in a state of perpetual thankfulness. It's a beautiful way to go through a day. And the current teacher, Eckhart Tolle, says, if the only prayer you ever say is thank you, that will be enough. So the second kind of prayer is praying as a solution to human problems, and that's where we can take a more active role by petitioning the divine for an intended outcome, or interceding for another person, or leveraging our worldly actions. It invites us to be in a relationship, in communion with the divine. And the reasons to pray, well, what is the purpose of praying? I mean, we might wonder, we seem to go about our day mostly making it all work. But for me, prayer is an essential part of my life now. And these are some of the reasons why that I'd like to share with you. Prayers help us to feel whole. The more whole you feel, the less you feel you need from the outside. And so that simplifies our lives. Prayers give us hope when things are hard and times are dark. And prayers bless others. What a great gift we can give to our friends and our loved ones. When we see them whole and give thanks for their recovery, we give them the greatest gift we can, which is a blessing. Prayers heal. Miracles occur when prayers are done in faith, that it can be so. And we're going to explore that a little bit more. Prayers of gratitude attract more to be grateful for, because like attracts like. That's what we just heard from Ella's poem. Prayers keep our egos in check by acknowledging a power greater than ourselves. And prayers give us relief and support. And when you hand the problem over to the one who knows all the backstory, the battle is no longer yours, but God's. And what this talk is about is that prayers create leverage in our lives. By using our imagination to live in the end, 
Live as though the prayer has already been answered before you move into action is how you can live a prayerful life and how you can make things work better for yourself and for your people and the world. So it's in our nature, spirituality, since ancient times, humans have yearned for connection with the universal intelligence within us and have used prayers to petition the divine for protection and for healing and for deliverance from danger. Give thanks for health and abundance. And mystics and poets have showered us throughout time with their sacred poems and writings about their relationship with the divine, their experience with the divine. And I find these incredibly inspirational. Hafiz is one of my favorite poets from Persia, from the 14th century. And there's a little poem of Hafiz's that I'll read to you. Write all that worries you on a piece of parchment, offer it to God, and turn all that frightens you into holy incense, ash. <coughs> and Hafiz talks about the sweetness of that connection with the divine. Know the true nature of your beloved in his eyes, your every thought, word, and movement is always, always beautiful. So today, science shows us that the supreme intelligence is a force that lives within us. The fields of quantum physics, epigenetics, brain mapping, that's just a few examples, verify what actually happens inside our bodies when we pray. It is a force that moves in us, through us, and beyond us. It shows us it shows up in our neurobiology, our biochemistry, our brainwave states, and in our genes. Praying can change our genes. Genes are blueprints, but the field of epigenetics shows us that genes can be changed. They require an environment to activate the gene, and the environment can be a positive environment or a negative environment. And you are in charge of the environment because you're in charge of your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. Scientists have measured this. This isn't a theory. It's a fact. This meeting of science and spirituality allows us to demystify prayer by training us to become an instrument of consciousness that we can access by engaging our body, mind, and emotions in prayer. And I love this little quote from Albert Einstein, who is the greatest scientist of the 20th century who says the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and all science. So in today's world, <laughs> prayers have a place. I believe they have a place. Even though the threats and dangers of life are different, a lot of them are perceived in our minds. But they're still real inside our neurobiology because many of us feel helpless and powerless to protect ourselves or to change our lives because of the world we live in. So we live in the age of information and technology and despite its phenomenal material advances, it promises us much but can leave us feeling empty and a sense of meaninglessness about life. And I believe the need for prayer is greater than ever because of this. And in my personal life, it enriches me beyond measure because it gives me a sense of peace and rightness about the way things are and an ability to accept what comes my way because I have a toolbox, a prior toolbox, to help mitigate the inevitable suffering that we have to experience in our lives. That's what being human is. But the power to choose our own thoughts, feelings, and beliefs are ours alone and cannot be taken away from us. It is our true power. And that's irrespective of any circumstances. And it helps us develop faith in a higher power to deliver our heart's desire. And it buffers us against all winds and enables us to have a degree of mastery in our own lives and a sense of peace. Who has permission to pray? Well, despite what some religions have taught us, we all have permission to pray, to use our prayer practice to build our own personal relationship with the divine without any intermediary. You don't need a church, you don't need a teacher. But we can act as an intermediary to support another person or situation anytime we want, and that is giving them a blessing. 
And if it's not us, then who? And if not now, then when? For me, the time is now. Since I was a child, I was curious about prayer, and I wanted to pray, but I didn't have a religious upbringing. Prayer was not familiar to me. For a couple of years, our family became members of the church, but even then, nobody ever really explained what prayer was, or even how to use it, or... And so, saying words out of a prayer book that didn't mean anything, couldn't feel anything, didn't, wasn't appealing to me. I didn't feel like anything was happening. And I was always disappointed because it seemed like I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't feel different. My life didn't change. So I gave up. I went off seeking along many paths with the decades of my life. And despite my best intentions to give up on praying, prayer actually just kept creeping back into my life. And it kept coming back and finding me, disguising itself as meditation, energy healing, intending for others as new thought teachings. Everything I read, everything I picked up, everything I tried ended up coming back and going, oh, this is prayer, interesting. And, uh, you know, so many new age, this or that things. And eventually I realized because of the feeling of connection I could experience inside of my body, this experience inside of me, and through studying different works, particularly my favorite teachers, Neville Goddard and Dr. Joe Dispenza, I realized I had discovered how to pray. So past and present metaphysical masters teach us that we must use our whole selves when we pray. And there is a simple but specific formula for this. And this is what we're going to demystify. It's when we use our body as an instrument of consciousness, our prayers become very effective. So there's a bit more information, and I hope it's not too much for you. But I would like to give this to you before we go into our meditation and our prayer practice again. So in the fields of epigenetics, brain mapping, and the work of the HeartMath Institute, neurobiology and biochemistry and quantum physics, those are the places where science and spirituality meet. Scientific testing verifies what happens inside our bodies when we pray. And these findings help us understand what we're doing and why. What we're, and so this information helps us, particularly those of us who have trouble with the concept of faith or trust in a concept of a higher power, in a divine power. Science shows that, that this supreme divine energy is not actually anything separate from us. It's a force that lives within us, all around us, and it's a force that we can tap into and access because it shows up in our neurobiology in our heart and brain coherence. It shows up in our brainwave states and in our genes. And the scientists can even measure the genes, how they, even in a five-day meditation retreat, how the genes get affected. <coughs> That's the beauty of the modern age now, is that we can, for those who need it, see where this all shows up through scientific testing. So, in prayer, we must use our imagination to feel that the wish is fulfilled. And this is how we do it. We must create a clear intention. This is key, a clear intention, coupled with an elevated emotion, and we'll get into that in a moment, to send our prayers out into the unified field, into the God realm, and create a state of gratitude, which is the state of receiving the prayer back, to feel and receive our answered prayer. The thought sends the signal out as an electrical wave, and the feeling is the magnetic wave that brings it back. We are energy beings. We're not material matter. It looks like we are, but we're energetic waves. And we know how to send an intention and how to receive an intention. So in effective prayer, you're not asking, you're not begging, you're not commanding. You don't assert, you do one thing. And what that is, is get clear about what you want, feel it, and give thanks 
for its realization. So breaking it down into this formula, what do we want? We get a clear intention. Today we're going to focus on our health because that's something we can all relate to. When you're doing your own prayers at home, you can focus on anything you like. You can focus on a specific health condition. If you have a thyroid issue, you can focus there. Today we're doing a general well-being prayer. You can focus on wealth, opportunity. You can get specific. You can give, focus on prayers for another person or for a situation. It's best if you focus your prayer rather than having, you know, in some ways it feels tempting to go, well, I just want health, happiness, prosperity, and peace for all. And then that covers everything that I'd ever want and just throw that prayer. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's kind of the first definition that we came across in our dictionary where we're kind of giving thankful, the thankfulness prayer, where we can actually pray all day long. Absolutely. But if we want to get specific, we want to harness the power of the divine in our lives. The more specific we get, the better we will be. And what we're going to do is make a symbol for our prayer. And I'll explain that again in a minute. We're going to move into the creative state by creating an elevated emotion. We're going to create the mood. We're going to power up. And that's to cross the analytical mind. We're going to go from beta brain waves down to alpha brain waves. That's the intention. Because we need the mind to disengage so that we can feel ourselves. We have to cross down into the subconscious mind, get into the heart, which is the seat of the soul, and create a heart and mind coherence. We place our attention on our heart and create uh, that brain and heart coherence, bring up an elevated emotion, like love and awe and joy. There are different ways to do this. It takes a bit of practice moving into an elevated state without an external reason first to get into that. It goes against the grain. It goes against everything we've ever known or been taught. We usually wait for the experience outside ourselves to feel the gratitude, to feel the joy, to feel awe. We're going to go opposite to that. We start with creating an elevated emotion. And that's the energy, that's the electrical energy which sends the prayer and receives the prayer. Our limited states of emotion, resentment, anger, frustration, those have, don't have the energy and we don't want to pray if we're in those states. But we're not usually trained to feel those states on command. And it's a wonderful thing to practice because you can actually literally be joyful throughout your day. You don't have to have an external reason. And it's the perfect state of prayer. So to feel grateful before you can see anything to be grateful for, you become a vibrational match to your answered prayer. And the divine can then flow the answered prayer into that energetic place that you have created. And a little quote from Dr. Joe Dispenza says, in order to create a change in our world, we have to create a new reality from a new state of being. And that's the new state of being I'm talking about. Activating the heart center, creating a heart and brain coherence, and staying present and connected to the unified field. And then the last part of the prayer formula is to prepare for its arrival. And this is what the Bible and spiritual teachers call faith. Now, faith is a little bit of a problem sometimes, understanding it was for me most of my life. I don't know what faith is or how to access it. But I came across in my reading and training this beautiful acronym. Julie's going to hold it up so you can have a look at it. Anna White. <laughs> um, Greg Braden says an easy way to remember what faith is and works beautifully with what we're doing today is feel as if this happened faith feel as if this happened okay so we're now going to move into preparing to do our prayer do our meditation 
We're going to start with a guided meditation and we're going to use the formula we've just learned in the meditation. Or at the end of the meditation. So, what do we want? We're going to create an intention. We're going to use the intention we've already used at the beginning of the talk with our prayer. And, and then we're going to make a symbol. So the prayer is this. I am in perfect health and every cell in my body is filled with light. I am balanced, healthy, and whole. And I'm going to explain to you why we're going to use a symbol, because what we want to do is cross the analytical mind barrier from beta brain waves, from the conscious to the subconscious, down into our feeling place, where everything can change, where we can actually generate and radiate from that place. And of course the mind always wants to be thinking, we're going to just allow it to go to sleep a little bit, and we want it to. We're going to allow it to just calm down, and we're going to tell it the symbol that we want to use, so that we're not in our prayers thinking, did I say it right? Which word comes first? Did, was that all of it? So we're going to use the symbol H, the letter H for health, and we're going to put two squiggly lines circulating this symbol H for health. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're doing that is because those two squiggly lines represent the, electromagnetic, the, electri the electrical energy and the magnetic energy. The electrical goes out and the magnetic comes back. And, and so the symbol is encapsulated by these energy states. And so right now, I want you to hold that image of the H with the circles around it, knowing that information, and hold it in your heart, and I'm going to read what it re represents, what it symbolizes, and then the mind knows. Even if you can't consciously remember, the mind knows what we're talking about when we use the symbol H. So the symbol H means I am in perfect health, and every cell in my body is filled with light. I am balanced, healthy, and whole. Could you say that again for you? Because there's some distraction with the paper going around. Yeah. yeah. So the letter H, with the two squiggly circles around it, represents our prayer for health. And we're going to allow the mind to know that, to understand that. And it means I am in perfect health and every cell in my body is filled with light. I am balanced, healthy, and whole. And then the last thing we will do is create the mood while holding the intention. I'm going to do this. I will guide you through this in the meditation and in the prayer. I'm going to put a little background music on. I'm going to guide you into a meditation. We're going to hold the symbol, and we're going to radiate it, and we're going to bring it back. And then we're going to hold a state of faith. Feel as if this happened with thankfulness and gratitude. Okay, so I'm just going to set my music up and take a moment to get comfortable for a meditation. It's not long, it's five minutes and then the prayer and then we're going to finish the talk part and then I welcome your questions. And there are some other things I could share with you if there aren't any questions but I do welcome everything you may want to know more about. So get comfortable and we're going to close our eyes for five minutes in a moment. Excuse me. And I just want to check that you can hear my voice over the music. Everybody okay with that? Just some nods. Yep. Okay. Get comfortable. Close your eyes. Take your hands and place them over your heart. Your heart is the seat 
of your soul. Acknowledge this creative center. Give thanks for your heart, where the energy of wholeness and unity exists. This is your connection to the unified field. Relax your hands and rest your attention in the space that your heart occupies. Place your awareness in this space. Go to the space at the back of your heart, in the center of your chest. Feel the energy of space within this center, the seat of your soul. And as you rest your awareness within this sacred place, allow your breath to flow in and to flow out from this center. and feel your breath begin to move more slowly, more deeply, and more completely. Breathing in and breathing out. loving and acknowledging this center with your breath and awakening it. And as you breathe through this center, now it's time to bring up an elevated emotion, an emotion of gratitude or joy or falling in love with life. Care and kindness for all things. Breathe. Feel. Profoundly. Enrich yourself, loving yourself into life. And now holding this state in this space, in this loving place in your heart, drop this clear intention symbolized by the letter H, which is our prayer. Place this H inside this space in your heart. I am in perfect health and every cell in my body is filled with light. I am balanced, healthy and whole. With these elevated emotions of joy and thankfulness and love and life, hold this prayer in your heart. Feel it. Now radiate this prayer, this intention beyond your body on this electromagnetic wave, broadcasting this energy into the field.
and intend that all of life be enriched by the intention of the greatest good for all that exists in the universe. Use this wave of energy for the greatest good. For all that exists in the universe. Breathe and feel and open your heart and radiate this prayer into the space beyond your body. And the longer you hold this prayer and radiate, the more you draw this prayer of our hearts to you. perfect health and every cell in my body is filled with light. I am balanced, healthy and whole. release this prayer to the divine. Let go. Let it go. And engage trust. Trust in the unknown. Faith. Feel as if this happened. Give thanks. Rest in this state of thankfulness for a moment and allow your body to respond to your answered prayer. Feel what it would feel like to live in that answered prayer now, balanced, healthy, and whole. And if you feel called now, place your hand over your heart and feel the blessing. Bless the power within you that knows how to heal you and give thanks for that answered prayer. Feel grateful, feel love, feel life. And when you feel ready, You can open your eyes. And it is so. Now I just want to say that prayer is called a prayer practice for a reason <laughs> you may or may not have felt very much at that at that time in this time we've created together but I assure you the more you practice the more you will feel it and like everything that we want to learn how to do it doesn't matter what it is. We call it 10,000 hours of training for this or that or anything else. Prayer is no different. So the more we practice, the more it becomes like breathing and second nature and enriches our lives. Thank you. And time for questions. Uh, I have some other things I could share with you if we have no questions, but um, 
Thank you, Fred. I think I'll have lots of questions. Okay. <laughs> I, I have one right off. Actually, first a comment. Like when you're talking about feel the experience, the experience of joy or gratitude and what live in it. And I remember the Dalai Lama being asked once, how can you be so joyful and happy when what's happening in Nepal? Your people are being slaughtered. And, you know, what's that about? And that just occurred to me when you were speaking, that's what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, he's already living in as if it's happened. He's living in a state of joy. Mm -hmm. Because that stuff is going to happen anyway. That's the prayer. That's the prayer. He's living in a state of prayer. Yes, he's living in a state of prayer. That was it. It's so beautifully yeah. done. And that's really what we're all being called to do, to live in that state. And that's how we change the world. We can change the world through prayer. I have a Dalai Lama quote, too. If every eight-year-old in the world is taught meditation, we will eliminate violence from the world within one generation. Mm -hmm. Any questions of prayer? Okay. Uh, a bunch of questions. Fire away. I hope I So the first thought I had was wanting to ask you if you were married. And then I had this vision that it really was more about a, a child holding on to your white shirt, your white sweater. Because there's a real attraction to your vibration that I have. And then I asked myself, is your vibration any different from everyone else's vibration? And I really have a vibration that I sense from some people in this room. Julie, Michael, Keith, and others. So is your vibration any different from everyone else's vibration is one question. Or are we all vibrating on the same frequency? Interesting question. Um, and I can only speak from what occurs to me, which is that we cultivate our vibration with our every thought, feeling, and belief. And so I think everybody's vibration is unique to them. So I feel through my practice and through what I've been fortunate enough to learn in training that I'm changing the habit of being myself. That, now, those are Dr. Joe Dispenza's words, and that's the title of one of his books. Because, to be perfectly honest, I didn't much like who I was. And not that I was any different from, you know, I wasn't any different from so many other people, I'm sure. The way we live our lives in stress, <coughs> in chaos. But I had thoughts, feelings, and beliefs inside of me that I didn't like, and I didn't know how to change them. So as I came across these teachings, I learned how to change them. And so that using vibrational medicine, which is what I call this, for energy medicine, you can change your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs and become a different person. And that's what I think I'm in the process of becoming. And every time we choose a thought, feeling, or belief, moment to moment through every day, as we go to sleep at night, is a very powerful time to tune in and check in with who we are. First thing in the morning when we wake up, sometimes it's hard to grab something that's really vibrationally aligned to what we want to be. But that's the practice. And so the vibration is what we're cultivating. It's what we are. We look like we're bodies walking around, but we're actually vibration. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so where do you live? In Nelson. <laughs> In Nelson? Yeah. And where do you live? Where do you, do you train? I train... Uh, Teach. I, well, What's happening now is that Julie and I have been working together for a number of years. Julie, some of you know, is uh, a Course in Miracles teacher, and this is my practice here, and we're very aligned in so many ways, and we're just now moving into a place where we 
Well, Julie's been teaching for years. I haven't been teaching this. I taught other things in the past, other energy medicine, like homeopathy. But now I've moved into this. And so we're moving into a place now where we're starting to hold prayer circles, uh, healing circles, work with people one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, teaching groups. And we're just, I personally, I'm just putting that together throughout the summer and starting classes in the fall. And I have a card here that I, and I've got a website and a blog that I'm just developing over the summer where more of this information and access to training and counseling and coaching or whatever you call it is available. And, um, and in the fall, Julie will be picking up again her teaching with Coasting Miracles. I will be picking this up. We'll be holding some things separately and some things together because we're aligned in so many ways and, and uh, different in other ways. So if you are interested in, anyone's interested in doing more in this work, pick up a card. The phone number is active, but the website and the blog isn't yet. But it will be soon. And I'm more than happy to um, be in touch with you over the summer, to work as needed over the summer, and to, sit, to formalize it more in the fall. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for you? Well, we hand around our donation basket, and please give as you can. We really appreciate it. Um, is there a question? I'd like to say something. If not, I just have a question. Oh, Lily has a question. Okay. Thank you. Well, it's just a comment. I really appreciated your talk. It just, it just filled me in, and thank you very much. And um, I guess I don't know how to put this into words, except we each have a vibration, and we are part of the soup together, right? Yeah. So as it, it's a comment more than a question, I guess. So as we raise our vibration by being more conscious and um, I guess I don't want to feel separate or better or different or anything like that. So the thought is, I guess, well, maybe you want to speak to that because I, I you know, we, I don't want to feel that my vibration yeah. is any different to anybody else on yeah. some level just because we are all it. Yeah. And it is all us, and you know what I'm saying? Like, I do. I guess that's just the, the separation that I'm not wanting to feel about my vibration being different. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Yeah. And I, I don't... So, I'm glad you asked that, because oh, I actually feel the opposite. Okay. I felt very separate from everybody before I started to really cultivate this work. And now I feel very connected to everybody. And as I feel, I mentioned earlier in the talk, as I feel whole, as I feel more whole, I have more to give out of that wholeness. Before, I, when I felt empty, there's nothing, it's dried up. And so I would give out of a sense of emptiness, and then that's not real giving. That's conditional action, somehow. So, in my experience, in my life, this work helps me feel whole and connected moment to moment with everybody. And there is less and less sense of separation. Um, and because in order to do this work, this prayer in this way, the only way I can do it is by connecting with the whole. It isn't me doing anything. It's me connecting into the whole, and the whole pours through me. Did that answer your question, Lily? Um, yeah, it was just sort of a comment. I, maybe it was a question, I don't know. Yeah. Do you want to speak to that? No. Okay. No, you can do it. Okay. 
Yeah, I think you answered two. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else before we're getting close to uh, to our hour? Any other questions of Freya before? Just an expression of gratitude for what you brought to us this morning. And, Thank you. Um, that was really beautiful. Thank you. I found it beautiful. Thank you. I feel really grateful for you to show up, for everyone to show up, my friends and my family and people I've never met. Thank you. I love sharing this. It's my greatest joy. It's not the greatest joy. I have many joys, but it's one of the joys of my life now. And I feel really grateful to be able to share it with people. And so your time and attention here in the circle is really appreciated. On closing, I'd like to uh, say this short prayer from Mother Teresa. And she said, the fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love, and the fruit of love is service, and the fruit of service is peace. Isn't that beautiful? Can you say it again? Uh, Mother Teresa. No, can you say it okay, again? Absolutely. The fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. The fruit of service is peace. Is it okay for me to just add one last thing? Is, you sure. Sure. is that okay? Yes. So I just wanted. I must switch. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to add one last thing about prayer circles, and uh, a teacher I've trained with, Lynn McTaggart, uh, doesn't call it prayer circles. She calls them intention groups. Um, but she's been measuring the, the effects of groups of eight people gathering for about the last 10 years, again, scientifically testing and measuring this, recording it. And I'm part of one of her groups on a year-long training right now. So it's wonderful because it's a prayer circle. And what we've, what's been discovered is that not only as each of the people, of the, one, each person in the eight um, says prayers and intends for each other as a group. So each person, one person can bring a prayer or intention for themselves or for someone in the group or for someone else. So that's what we all do, set that prayer and intention. There are recorded effects of healing and improvement as a result of that. But the most significant part about that is that each of the eight people who are intending in this circle, the altruistic act of intending for another, selflessly getting out of the way, brings incredible benefits to their own personal life. Things improve for them, even greater than the person they're intending for. So that's what I want to start doing here, really soon, like through the summer and in the fall. Thank you for your time. And Marcia, would you like to extinguish the chalice as you lit it, please? In here, in case you have a word or two. Mm -hmm. okay. As we began, um, so will we end. We've. We've heard the notions of how to bring peace and joy and through gratitude and action in the world. Ubuntu, please, as we extinguish the light, bring the notion of Ubuntu into your hearts and use it in your daily lives and work. Thank you for your wonderful presentation today. Thank you, Marcia. And this concludes our service. And um, but I think Anne, do you have some announcements? Um.